Hey guys, it's Whitney. Welcome back to my channel. And today I've got three spring decor and Mother's Day gift ideas. One of them, obviously, you see there says home is where mom is. That one is going to be our first project. I had a fun making all three of these, but let's start with the Mother's Day specific one. So this little guy here, uh, just a little frame I got from Dollar Tree. Um, now this thing is enclosed in glass, so it didn't actually come apart too easy like I had thought it would, but um, you'll see here, I just kind of said, well, if I break it, it was only a dollar. Because <laughs> when I bought it, it was a dollar. Everything's $1.25 now. Um, also, from time to time, you're going to see me stick my head in the dang frame because this is a new tripod, new angle. So I'm hoping you guys like the new angle. Um, basically, top down. So it's like we're working first person here. So anyways, I did successfully get that off of um, the backing. And the glass does not come out. It is basically made you know it's sandwiched into that plastic frame there so without destroying it there's no way to get that glass out and then get it back in so I had to get some cheap washi tape this washi tape I got at at Dollar Tree also a while ago and I'm just taping it off like you would use painters tape because I need to paint the inside edge of the frame now that's the inside edge on the outside of this glass and the inside edge on the inside of the glass so uh, what you see me do here after I've got it all taped off, and we're going to use a uh, Waverly Mineral Chalk Paint right here. I like that mineral color. It's very pretty with the with the gray. Uh, and you know you know what I'm going to do, guys. I'm going to distress it with the white chalk paint later. But we needed to do the inside edge, edge so that we can get rid of the yellow. So you have to do the inside of the inside edge also, because you'll see through the glass. It's, it almost gives it a not picture it's, it is a picture frame what's the word i'm looking for guys it's a um, like a shadow box effect on this type of frame that's why i grabbed it because i figured i'm going to pop the back off and i'm going to put something cute on the inside of it before i glue the back back on before i glue the back back on back back on back back anyways <laughs> um i put two coats on here uh, of course within all that i'm drying it with my little that's my little travel hair blow dryer because my heat gun started to do bad things but after I did the two coats, top, bottom, and sides, and I did the inside as well, now I'm grabbing, this is Folk Art chalk paint. If the brands matter to you, this one's Folk Art, the other one was Waverly. And I'm just taking a, um, I think that's a stencil brush. You guys, I don't pay attention to brushes. It is what it is. I grab a brush, uh, except for the one on you see there on the right, that's a chippy brush. I know that from watching other people's videos, and I got the, bu the brush that's laying on the right-hand side I'm not using. I got that on Amazon, so if you guys want those same brushes, go ahead and click on that link in my description below, and you can find those brushes under tools. And then, of course, I get a cute little kickback on it. Very, very small one, but every little bit helps. And I am literally going to town here on the, the dry brushing, distressing. I love doing this to everything. This is like my new obsession. Look how cute it came out. Now, of course, I've sped this up, so it did take longer. And then you can, t you see a, a, a per you see the yellow there. That's going to get covered up when we glue the back back on. Back back on. When we glue the back back on. <laughs> Seriously, I don't know how else to say that. <laughs> Anyways, but um, <clears throat> you can still see a little bit of the yellow when you get really close to it. But you guys have to tell me if you think it's like decision breaking or not. I don't think it is. I love the way this turned out now. So I'm going to make this into like a greenery type thing. My mother loves green. I love green. Again, I think it's my lack of living where there isn't green. I live in the desert. So this is a scrapbook piece of a piece of scrapbook paper I got from Michael's so many years ago that it doesn't matter. <laughs> if you know what I mean, you guys have that stuff in your stash. So I grabbed it. I cut it out. I wanted the fern portion of it to be coming from the bottom side where the words weren't. So you're going to see me take the actual frame and put it over the project many times so that I can get things, you know, in the right direction from where I want. You're just going to make sure that you've got the paper placement of you want, uh, the paper placement that you want. If you have um, a paper design that you want specifically in a certain way, then you're going to have to kind of manipulate it and move it around to get it to where you want it to be. And then also the little extra piece that I popped off on there had a big old chunk of glue on it. But after using the heat gun, it came off real easily. And then I had a smooth surface. So I didn't have to worry about that like poking through or showing through after I glued on the paper. Now I'm gonna use wood glue here, guys. I know some of you question sanity when you're like, why is she using wood glue? I am not a Mod Podge person. I have had bad experiences. I, I just don't like Mod Podge. I also don't have patience for it either. I know a lot of people say you need to wait specifically for Mod Podge to dry. I just, I might try some stuff later on down the road, but I'm not a Mod Podge person. Mod Podge, Mod Podge person. 
And also a glue stick. I've had wrinkles and come up with the glue sticks and things have peeled off. Now, because this is like a shadow box thing, after I glue the back on to this, you're not gonna be able to get in there. So if things come loose or things peel forward, I'm not gonna be able to fix it. So I used wood glue. Wood glue works with paper. I was gluing it to cardboard, paper on cardboard. All that stuff is made from trees. So in my instance, you'll see like whatever happens on a molecular level with wood glue has worked out just fine. So now I've got exactly what I want. I'm going to use this. This is a reindeer moss that I got at my, or I believe I got it at Hobby Lobby. But anyways, you can get that reindeer moss anywhere. Specifically, it says it's chartreuse. It is the brightest, limest green color. It's like my favorite color green. So I'm going to put this uh, reindeer moss on the inside ledge. Now I had to be careful not to put the glue close to the glass. I'm putting it on the inside of that ledge so that from the front you're not seeing glue. So just be mindful of that, you guys. If you attempt the same thing with, uh, you know, like a frame that, that has this same effect, if you glob that glue on, it might squish towards the glass and then you'll have to try to pick it all off. Also, don't forget to clean the glass before you close it or clean the glass as you go. All of these other little picks you see here are literally pieces that I have that, you know, you pick up off the floor when things fall apart or after projects when you're doing things and you have all these little extra, you know, bits and bobs laying around that are leftovers. I don't throw anything away, guys. I throw very little away. So these are all little pieces that have fallen off of bushes and picks and flowers and things over the years. And literally that little tiny round flowery thing I showed you, it ended up not fitting between the glass and the back. It was too thick and I didn't, I was not going to be able to cut it apart to the way I wanted it. So I just went with this vine looking stuff here. I picked that up off the floor on my way back into my craft room from where I keep my flowers. I literally saw it on the floor. I was like, hmm, I could put that in there. So I picked it up off the floor because, you know, life is life and we all have messy craft rooms sometimes stuff falls on the floor and you're like I never even saw that there so I was gonna do just the bottom corner but I thought this needs something in the top corner and I didn't want it to interfere too much with the wording because if, if it's too busy behind there you're not gonna be able to read the words so I had to kind of calm myself kind of pull myself back so Whitney don't go overboard don't do what you normally do I thought I could put ribbons and the kitchen sink in here it'll be great so I had to calm it down but I did add more moss to the top and of course, I'm going to work out a frame a little bit. But then I was like, well, let me use the rest of this little piece here. I ended up cutting it into so many little pieces. But I did use that whole little vine, that little vine piece, little remnant piece I had. And I just, I just have a plastic tote bin in another room with extra pieces in it. Some of them, I have one for flowers and then I have one for greenery. And it's also where I keep the extra leaves and things that I save. And I put those on the back of wreaths. If you guys have been with me for a while, you'll know that I cover up the behind the scenes on the back of the wreaths. So no one can see like what you've done, how you've secured it. Um, I keep these in the same spot, maybe a smaller tote bin, but separate. But all these little extra pieces, it feels good to finally just use something. No matter how small this one little sprig is, it has become part of something wonderful. So I'm happy because I honestly do not even remember what bush or bundle of leaves or flowers that this thing came off of. But I think it looks really perfect with these the, the dark color green looks perfect. The little tiny leaves on it are the perfect shape. And I think it looks great for what I was going for. I was going for, you know, green, happy. Anything for me is green and happiness because I don't have that where I'm at now. Someday, guys. Someday I will move out of the desert. <laughs> but I was able to get everything placed where I liked it. And then don't, again, don't forget, get your glue strings out of there. Get your fingerprints off of the inside. Now, of course, we'll clean the outside when we're done. But I almost forgot to do that because I was about to glue that back on. <laughs> I was putting the backpack on. Backpack. Glue that backpack on. And this one was a little tight fit because, remember, it was kind of hard to get it out. So just put a bead of glue around that edge. Make sure you don't put too much so it doesn't squish forward. And then I held it down. And look how cute she is. This thing looks like a completely different picture doesn't it guys what do you think now you can customize this for your own mom or grandmother or anybody who is a mom if you have a friend you know it doesn't have to necessarily be your mom it could just be a friend that is a mom anything if their favorite you know whatever their favorite color is whatever their favorite you know hobby is if they have a specific love of anything whether it's flowers or you know somebody who likes pumpkins I mean I know someone who likes pumpkins so much she's got tattoos on her arms of pumpkins you know people like stuff 
<laughs> my mom likes greens. My, she also likes chickens and ducks too, but you know, I got lots of that too because I got a farmhouse obsession. So for this one, mom's going to get this for Mother's Day because it's green and it's ferny and she's going to absolutely love it. Also, she doesn't probably, she won't watch this before Mother's Day because I usually have to remind her, hey mom, I put a video up, take a peek at it. So she'll see it later. Shout out to mom. Love you, mom. <laughs> Next one in. Now this this pretty girl here. This idea came to me because I saw somebody else do something similar, but they didn't use a picture frame. They just used a vase. So get yourself a picture frame that you like and then cut the back off of it. Take your glass, your cardboard out, cut the back off of it. Now I used an X-Acto knife and you'll see there I just sliced right down the side, but save it. Now I'm going to dry brush this. I specifically picked this picture frame because I liked the design on it. It had a raised design and I knew as soon as I dry brushed on it, the base color was pretty much close to that mineral gray I like and I'm gonna dry brush on it a little bit too much on the corner there make sure you keep a wet paper towel or a baby wipe nearby guys but y'all already know that and takes things off very easy fixes things um, this was a five dollar frame from Walmart and I recently picked it up probably within a week of this video I loved the, the picture and it's a five by seven picture frame and my idea here is instead of using a vase, we're going to turn it into a standing a vase. So these little these little crafter square stretched uh, canvases from Dollar Tree, the five by seven was too small because it was the exact size of the hole. Now this six by eight fit perfectly. Now see, look, those little inserts from the picture frame fit perfectly inside our stretched canvas. So I wanted something a little bit thicker. I got a spare piece of cardboard. Everybody's got that. Whether you use a cereal box, use something. Everybody's got a box somewhere. You've ordered something. Also, I cut through my, my little painter's mat there, which of those are really old puppy pads if anybody needs to know behind the scenes. Let's be real. So I took my cardboard out after I cut it to size and I'm putting that inside there. Now it's canvas, so it's stuck to my painting surface, but we're covering that, so don't worry. If you want to paint this canvas, paint it black to match the back of the frame. I didn't feel the need to do that. And here I'm popping off the little holders so that we can actually get a better... Uh, glue contact between that so if you see what I'm doing here I'm creating a dip inside so it's deeper and we're going to put basically our flowers and arrangement inside there this is a black sharpie so it doesn't show up too too much so I know where to put my bead of glue so that I'm not actually gluing in that channel but you'll see in a second we're going to need to do that anyways so I put that line of glue around the edge I glued my canvas frame on there and then from the inside here, there were sir, some, still some spaces because obviously those Dollar Tree, you know, p frames on those canvases aren't perfect. They're all misshapen and odd. So you can't see too well, but I'm using my glue gun and I'm just literally putting a very generous line of glue around the whole inside edge there. And then here we make sure you have a, a still have a clean edge or clean it up a little bit. I didn't need too much. And we're going to glue our picture backing right on to the back of our canvas. And ta-da. And then we now have a standing frame again, but we've created something deeper. Now I was showing you there the perimeter. You could put some nautical rope around that or ribbon, or if you choose to paint it black to match the frame, by all means do so. I didn't feel like I needed to. I dry brushed the white on the front and for me, it made it a lot easier. This is just a remnant piece of styrofoam. Cut it to fit. I do not want to fill in the whole thing because we are going to basically glue it to the cardboard which is why I needed to put that in there to give the canvas some more structure to glue things to and or to hold just hold things up in general these are little picks that are from ancient ages ago again these a lot of this stuff is just stash busters I'm going to basically just fill this frame with a bunch of throwaways <laughs> But everything's going to be within the theme of green because I have an obsession. <laughs> so, again, with the reindeer moss and chartreuse, I love the color of this moss. And then I'm also going to add in some of this grayish brown Spanish moss from Dollar Tree. The chartreuse rain reindeer moss is hollow. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Chartreuse reindeer moss. Jeez, my phone. Could we could we have any more interruptions, Whitney? Sorry, guys. The chartreuse colored reindeer moss is from Hobby Lobby. The other Spanish moss you see is from Dollar Tree. The two together look absolutely wonderful. I love the compliments. It's like the best of your botanical garden. You throw, the, throw everything together. Now you're gonna see me use little pieces of pretty much everything I could find in my 
throwaway box in my hey this is not garbage because I still love it and then there's a couple pieces of things here too you'll see me cut off now these little berry bushes are from Joann's from so many Easter's ago that it again it doesn't matter everybody <laughs> We're never ever going to be able to, to, you know, throw together the same exact things. I've got, you see on the top right, I got some tulips left over from Michael's. I think this is a bush from Hobby Lobby, I believe. It says it's rosemary. No, it's not rosemary. Basil or something. I'm not sure. These are all little greenery bushes that we just cut off little tiny pieces here and there. As I'm going, I'm filling in with the reindeer moss and then I fill in with the Spanish moss. This right here is a bush of eucalyptus I got on Amazon. I love the bright colored ends on it. Should you choose to want to get that same bush from Amazon, I believe I got 12 of them in a pack for a very good price. It is also located in my Amazon store. Um, you can get to that in the description. There's a link in the description and in pinned in the first comment, you'll be able to find it. There's a bush I just grabbed from Walmart that is a boxwood. You'll see me use some more boxwood in our last project or the one coming up next. But these little tiny ones fit perfectly and then you kind of just cut things apart and get them real small. I felt that that was a little bit too big at some point. I'll glue it in there, but you're gonna see me push it down off to the side. And everything is just kind of like a testing phase. Put it in there, move it around, see how you like it, see how things work out, and then just go, go from there. And if you wanna move something, by all means move it, guys. Even if you've glued it down, just pull it back out. This is kind of like a, it's like a messy, beautiful collage of anything that you feel. I knew that I wanted to stick stick keep it within all greens so i used everything green i could possibly find green berries the tulips are left over that have fallen on the floor so i have literally one little sprig of tulips i'm going to place in here in a little bit and then the rest of it is just all pieces that are left over from everything else other than the moss i mean you could literally just leave all the leaves out and just do a combination of the two mosses and say put like a wooden tag in the middle with an initial on it or even a wooden letter you can get a wooden letter from walmart very very cheap 97 cents you can also get them at hobby lobby too oh there's that stem from of tulips that i had left over from from uh, michael michael's tulips i had left over of course i use the green ones so again i just stayed with green if your color is different if your decor color choices are different if your favorite colors or if you're making it as a gift for someone go with that theme and stick with it but i had no problem because I own a lot of greens and I also have a lot of stuff just little pieces left over and this is the best way to just kind of have fun and just throw everything together so with that said I'm gonna stop the jibber jabber and you guys can just watch the rest of it if this isn't your thing to watch these things come to life then go ahead and skip forward to the next one Okay, so here, majority of it's all done. And now what I'm doing is I'm gonna grab some of the Spanish moss in little tiny pieces and I'm using just a stick. This is a leftover skewer from something. Um, and I'm gonna tuck it in. So there's no glue involved in this process on this point right here, but there is a, um, a necessity to add a little bit more of that moss because it wasn't poking through enough. And then lastly, I found a little bit left of the strings of pit berries. Now there's green and white on there. And I'm just taking the, this entire piece that's left over. 
I didn't use all of it. I used the majority of it and I'm wrapping it around a stick, a glue stick because it's basically the closest thing I had to me. So I'm wrapping it tightly around it and I'm kind of squishing it together to get that, you know, that really cute curly cue look. I need that really cute ringlet, tight ringlet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it into pieces and I'm going to nestle that in. So I'm going to take the wire cutters and cut a piece. The piece I cut off, I'm going to straighten it out on one side so I basically have a flat edge and I'm going to use it and I'm going to pick it into the styrofoam. So it needs to go into the styrofoam part in the middle. And then from there, I'm going to just kind of arrange it. I didn't glue anything other than the ends into the styrofoam. The, the one end, the second end is kind of left on its own. You'll see how this comes together. But this was also a last minute item and there I'm sticking my head into the frame because I'm not used to having a camera above me. It's usually in front of me, so sorry about that. Also, I didn't have my hair done, guys. That's the best part about this new angle. I don't have to do my hair. I don't gotta do my makeup. I can just craft and have fun and then, you know, come to you guys later. After I've, you know, put on all the war paint. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm literally just nestling all this in. And then after I've got them arranged, I believe I put four different sprigs in. So you see bottom left, top right. And look how it turns out. It's just a beautiful mess of green and it makes me so happy to look at it I absolutely love it and the best part is is that you don't have to lay it flat like a vase you can actually put this it's like an up it's like an upright arrangement you can lay this and put this on a desk you can put it on an entry hall table anywhere where you need like a space saving type of arrangement and you still get the benefit of having all the pretty either flowers or greenery and the pit berry little ringlets in there little curly cues make me happy too i love it you guys tell me what you think let me know is this something that you guys can recreate the, uh, the options are endless with picture frames and, and flowers and things just tell me what you guys would do i absolutely love this it was so much fun to make it all right and here is our wooden crate. This is our last project for this video. Um, everything here is from Walmart. Every single thing here is from Walmart. This little wooden crate I found in the, um, it's like the wooden section where they have all their crafts. You can get letters and all kinds of things. So you take the label off and then I had to use a little bit of my finger sander there. I love that finger sander. You guys, it is awesome. You can get that in my Amazon shop. If you don't have one, it changes. Oh, I love it. It's perfect. It's Velcro and everything stays perfectly on it. So this wooden crate was, I think, $6.88. And for the size of it, that is an A-OK -okay price for me. $6.88 not bad so i'm taking my mineral white er, mineral white <laughs> it's because guess what i do later i put i distress it with white chalk paint shocker so i'm taking my mineral chalk paint from waverly which formerly was at walmart my walmart now has a different brand i know somebody's uh, some people have said their walmarts can't still have waverly but i guess for my side of the country and the west coast here there's no more waverly but it's it's another type of home project chalk paint i haven't bought any because I haven't ran out of chalk paint yet. <laughs> I have lots of it. So I'm just putting a couple coats. Now this little guy soaked up a lot of paint. Um, so this is probably about two and a half coats and lots of drying. Skip ahead and here is my chippy brush again. Folk art chalk paint. Now that again, sorry, disclaimer. That's not from Walmart, but you can get white chalk paint at Walmart if you should want to do an entire project from one store. So I am just going to dry brush this. And I go very, very lightly at first. I do that with every project. I go light, and then I will start to get way, way, way more heavy-handed, like you can see here. That's the bottom, so at that point I didn't... It was kind of like, let me just test the waters and see how bad I can make this. <laughs> but after I've gotten all of it done, back top sides and everything like that, there she is. Look how cute she is. So we're going to fill in this because we don't want to see through the slats. So this right here is a... Okay, so I did lie. This is not from Walmart, but you can get burlap from Walmart. Normally, I have a big roll of burlap. For, now, that's a big roll, right? But that's from burlapfabric.com. Now, this is they did not send that to me. I bought that from them. And let me tell you, shipping is not cheap from them. But that, well, that burlap is very nice burlap. It's not see-through. I was going to use some burlap from uh, Michaels that I'd had, some 6-inch wide burlap. But it literally was so see-through that I would have had to use so much of it. It was ridiculous. So... This is a much thick, tighter uh, weave of burlap, so you don't see through it. And you guys can watch here how I'm kind of measuring it with 
the foam block. That foam block is from Dollar Tree, but again, you can get those at my at Walmart should you need to do everything from one store. I don't know why. Some people have messaged me and said, you know, why don't you do stuff that we can do from all one store? Why don't you show me a supply list? It's like because a lot of times this stuff is universal, guys. You can find these things at either multiple stores or you can get alternatives at every other store. You just have to be a little bit more you know that the snooping ability needs to be strong and let me tell you i'm a digger i'm a snooper i do those things i will dig through an entire end cap if i have to i'll move things into a cart organize stuff for people if i'm looking for something i really want so i put one long ways and then i put two pieces crossways you saw how i kind of laid them across the piece and here i thought i could put the glue so it would soak through and this is where in the Michaels burlap, that would have worked. But with this burlap fabric.com burlap, it was a very thick one. So I had to lift it up and put it underneath to glue it down. Now, the base and the styrofoam will be glued in. But don't be afraid to glue in styrofoam because styrofoam is easily removed. I plan on reusing this base for many different items. So the arrangement I make today, I did not glue anything in past the styrofoam. If the styrofoam gets used to the point where you can no longer stick flowers in it then you break it apart with some with your hands or some pliers and then you replace it with a new piece of styrofoam then you can continually reuse your base i happen to just love this gray color with white you know distressing over it so i will probably use this for many projects you you guys may see this again in the future so i'm also leaving the plastic on there because this is a kind of like weird floral foam so here's everything from walmart We've got some billy, billy bushes, we've got some boxwood, and then we've got a eucalyptus bush. I used everything here. One bush of eucalyptus, two bundles of the boxwood, and three of those billy somethings, billy bush, three of those little purple flower guys. Those were out during Easter. So you see me put a piece of glue on here, and then I had to realize, Whitney, don't use the glue because we're going to reuse this. So going forward from that one piece, there is no more hot glue. And this is where the fun comes for me. You guys have seen me in live streams and heard that a lot. I know a lot of you said you enjoyed the, the creating process. This is the part that makes me happy. You can start to see things come alive and then you just know as you're placing things in, you get that bubbly feeling in your chest, at least I do. And it, it's like, this is making me so dang happy. You guys have no idea. This was, it, it seems like it might be easy and kind of mind numbing, but if you enjoy this kind of thing, which I do so much, it's not boring. It's so much fun. So place these in how you see fit. I was making sort of like a, just like a little planter full of box, no, it's not even boxwood, it's eucalyptus, but I was making almost like a, a boxwood planter. I was, you guys, I love boxwood. It will not grow in Vegas without a lot of water in your water bill. <sighs> Don't get me started. Don't get me started. Yeah, we're in a drought. We've been in a drought for like 50 years. <laughs> Anyways, I went to take the put these boxwood picks in here from from Walmart also and they were a little bit long so I just started cutting them all off of their pieces but then they had like a little branch at the bottom so I cut the little piece off and you can see me put those in the top left I end up using those as well because we need to fill in uh, around the little blue around the little purple guys when we put those cute little purple things in there but this was just to give it another texture and a different color that still complemented it so you see basically we have a beautiful little planter box full of greens which puts in a really a good base for any color really you guys could you could pop yellow in there for summer if you're into you know teal or that cyan blue color anything that really would make you happy whatever your color is i happened to come across these purple ones when i was at walmart picking up some other items and they just screamed spring to me that i couldn't say no okay so now we're gonna put in our pretty little purple billy somethings <laughs> you guys put in the comments what they are they're billy something I wanted these to be individual little sprigs, so there's going to be three perfectly placed sprigs, but my idea was let's get these four inch zip ties. So I have a bunch. We're going to put a zip tie at the bottom because I wanted it to stay together and kind of come up out of the greenery. And so cinching it down there at the bottom, at the base of it, was my best idea. So you can see how the difference is that the bush looks like it's more solid or it's put together more in a column. Please let me know if I'm making sense, guys, because that's the best way I can describe it. I wanted them to look like one column instead of like something that was just kind of growing wild out of it so almost wanted it to look like it was you know 
landscape maintenanced that way to look as though it's supposed to grow out of this like a topiary would be or like a boxwood type, type of thing but these are obviously these cute little flowers so i'm measuring them out here this is this is wildly accurate measuring as you guys can see here please make sure you know disclaimer that you get things even <laughs> look how cute it is i filled in those extra little pieces of boxwood around the base of each one of the, our little billy bobs there <laughs> let's call them billy bobs <laughs> awesome just so that you can hide the zip ties so you can see here you cannot see the zip ties around the base of them and then also should we ever take these out to replace them because remember i said i am going to recycle this base and use it for many different seasons in my home you can take the zip tie off and then you can use the billy bobs in your next project you know whatever whatever suits you whatever tickles your fancy will ever help you sleep at night <laughs> whatever makes you happy and this, this girl makes me happy. This is a very, very, I love the green with the gray and white. There's something about that, when that farm wood in the back, the farmhouse wood, wood wall. It's not a real wood wall, guys. It's fake. It's a backdrop. I'll tell you the truth. It's not like you didn't know. Let's be real. <laughs> tell me what you think, guys. All of these projects today were so much fun to make. I really feel like this particular set of goodies, these DIYs today were a good reflection of me and my abilities and also obviously my favorite color. I love pink, but technically my favorite color is green, especially these lime greens and fern greens and dark greens. I love green and green green is like my, I crave it. So it's like landscaping and flowers and, and anything like that. I love leaves, you name it. So I really feel like the pop of purple is perfect for the gray. My mom is going to love that picture for Mother's Day in a couple days. So tell me what you guys think. So with that said, this is the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for spending your time with me and continuing to support me in my channel. I do have a coffee page. If anybody would like to give me a shout out, buy me a coffee. There's a link in the description as well as in my pinned comment below. Uh, it's always appreciated, but never required. Just showing up, clicking links, saying hi, making comments, anything like that helps my channel get noticed and it's, it's the best way to support me should you be able to and again thank you guys so much take care of yourselves and each other you do a great job of it hugs to every single one of you and happy crafting i look forward to seeing you guys again in the next video okay bye bye